Um, yeah, my name's Harriet Bunning. I'm a researcher at SIUC. Um, and today I want to talk to you a little bit, we'll move from kind of dairy to beef cattle, and talk about how we can look for genetic variants in terms of resilience to climate effects on beef cattle. So there's obviously lots of routes we can go down when we look for genetic variants, but a good kind of basic place to start is to look um, for variation between breeds. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, and I wanted to look at variation between these different breed types. Um, so for those who might not be common with this way of classifying breeds, um, I classified all of the animals that I'm going to talk about today into either British beef, so these are things like our Aberdeen Angus, our Hereford breeds. Um, this is actually a, a Ling heifer in the photo here, so kind of native hill breeds to the UK environment. Continental breeds, so things like uh, Charolais, Simmental, and this is a Limousin heifer. Um, and then also, as we know, a lot of our beef comes from the dairy system, so I also wanted to include those breeds as well. And when we think about the resilience of these different breed types, we might already have some kind of preconceptions. Um, in the UK, the word hardy is thrown around a lot when we talk about kind of our native British breeds. Um, so perhaps we might expect them to be more robust, potentially more resilient. Um, they're supposedly well adapted for the UK climate, so are we going to see that the continental breeds might be less well adapted, and how does that impact the resilience? Um, and then when we're looking at dairy, uh, there's a lot of discussion about kind of dairy cattle being under higher metabolic stress. How's that going to kind of translate in terms of how resilient those dairy animals might be? So the aim of all of this today is to really answer this question, are these different breed groups um, differently affected by climate? Is there variation in terms of how resilient they are? To help answer this question, uh, I was lucky enough to have access to some really great data sets. Um, firstly, we have the information about the animals. This is records from uh, abattoirs across the UK. Uh, and even after cleaning, I ended up with over 1.6 million animals within my um, within the database, and these are animals that were alive between the year 2000 and 2019. I have lots of information about these animals, but in particular, the three traits I'm going to talk about today are cold carcass weight, so carcass weight, age at slaughter, and then a trait that's simply carcass weight divided by age at slaughter, so I'm going to call that carcass growth rate, but it's worth taking into account that's not really average daily carcass gain because it's not taking into account birth weights. Um, and then we're interested in how those traits are affected by some weather parameters and how that might vary across different breed groups. So if, to get the weather, um, the weather information for these animals, I had information about where each animal was every day of its life through the um, British Cattle Movement Service. And I connected this to a UK Met Office database called the HadGrid UK data, um, which has every one kilometer square of the UK mapped. And for each day, it has three parameters, the daily maximum temperature, the daily minimum temperature, and the daily rainfall. I use these to define the occurrence of heat waves, um, extreme dry days, and extreme wet days. I also looked at um, extreme cold days, but those didn't tend to have many significant effects, so I'm not going to talk about that throughout the rest of this. Um, and so from that, I can then look at, for each animal, the frequency of those different types of extreme weather that that animal experienced through its life. It's a frequency, it's not a total, because older animals have a greater chance of experiencing more. So to analyze this, I used, this is the kind of general model here, um, and basically had one model for each trait, um, cold carcass weight, age at slaughter, and carcass growth rate. And for that, I included the interaction between these weather variables, so the frequency of heat waves, dry days, and wet days, in each case, the interaction between the breed group. I also included a number of other things, I'm not going to talk through all of them right now, but it, importantly, I included two contemporary groups to try and, try and account for some of this variation in management. So these are the results that I'm going to show you today from this. Um, each of these bar charts, the, they represent the regression coefficients between the frequency of those extreme weathers and the trait of interest for, and the three different colors represent the three different types of breeds. So there's obviously a lot to dissect just from this one slide. Um, there's a few different things that I wanted to pull out. Firstly, if we look at the dark green bars, I should check this work beforehand, but it doesn't. Okay, so the dark green bars, um, in general, if we ignore that very first one, working across, you can see that they're closer to zero. That's generalizing. There's a few cases where, it, where they're not um, particularly the effect of dry days on age at slaughter. 
Um, and this might suggest, if a regression coefficient is closer to zero, that there's less of an effect. So we could infer from that that the British breeds are less affected by weather in terms of the effect on their carcass weight, age at slaughter, and carcass growth rates, potentially suggesting that they're more resilient. But I'm sure what popped out to you guys when you first saw this were these results here, which is that not only are we having difference in size, but in, ta in terms of the effect of heat wave frequency on carcass weight, it actually looks like we have a negative effect of heat waves on the carcass weights of continental and dairy animals. But these British breed animals, there's actually a positive correlation between the number of heat waves experienced and the carcass weights, which was really very surprising to me. And this translates when we look over at carcass growth rate. We can say that, yes, there is a negative impact of, the, of heat wave frequency on the carcass growth rates of both continental and dairy breeds, but that same um, correlation isn't there in the British breeds. So in summary, um, I think we can say generally British breeds appear to be less negatively affected by the weather than other breeds, which might imply that they're more resilient. Um, and in particular, just highlighting this idea that continental and dairy appear to be negatively affected by heat waves, but the, the British breeds aren't. But I really want to take you guys to take these results not necessarily these results are not necessarily due to genetic variation. There's an also awful lot of variation in how people manage these livestock, um, and that variation tends to be very much determined by the breeds of animals that they keep. So there's more work that needs to be done here, um, and I'm going to, during the WC Gallup session on Friday afternoon, talk about my a kind of few preliminary results looking at variation within a breed. Um, Thank you for listening. Thank you all these people for giving data and the EU for funding Gentle, which this is a part of.